Hi Pisces. Welcome to your December general reading. So interestingly enough, one of the things that I was really like focused on when I was meditating on your energy before I started, one of the things that I was sort of like honing in on is I wonder if you guys are like if your whole idea of how you relate to other people or how you see yourself in groups, like how is that changing for you? Because <clears throat> I feel like you don't fit in to the same crowd that you used to or there's some kind of change that's ha like, like you, <sighs> where you once felt like you fit in, you don't anymore. And I think that that's kind of become stressful for you. You're trying to figure out where you belong. And that's sort of a natural flow in life that we all sort of have to like figure out where we belong um, or we all feel like we need to figure out where we belong. Now, one of the things that I, yeah, and I feel like it's, it's very much um, based on the programming that you had when you were younger or like you're supposed to be this, you're, you, you know, you're, you're this age, so now you have to go to college, or you're this age, so now you have to get married, or you're this age, so now you have to, like, start taking your family to church, or start doing this, or, like, you know what I mean, how society, we have these rules and standards, and you sort of were, you were just, like, floating along, and swimming along, and doing what you need to do, and then all of a sudden, there's sort of this epiphany, and aha moment in the last couple of years for you, and now it's almost as if you're, like, waiting for other people to catch up with you. And it's really, it's kind of put some stress on you, which is understandable. It's totally understandable because you guys are one of the signs that, like, I feel like you guys are extremely social people, but a lot of people don't see it that way because a lot of people can't connect on a Pisces level because Pisces are extremely intuitive and you guys are so imaginative. There's, you know, and, and some people see that in a different kind of way, right? So a lot of people can't even like get on your level to begin with. So it's even though you're a social, you know, you like to be in groups, you're you're a social sign, um, you tend to find yourself alone quite a bit because people just don't get you or don't understand you. So I think that you're sort of like in between, and I feel like this whole transit with Jupiter coming in and um, you could be dealing with a Taurus energy or a Virgo Gemini energy. Um, but with this Jupiter transit and the eclipse that's all happening in your 11th house, I feel like there's this new idea of things of things for you to create and, and places for you to go and who you're going to collaborate with and what's going to happen with it. And you're going to find like-minded individuals that are going to um, kind of, you know, stimulate your brain and stimulate the things that you want to do. And you're not going to feel so left out, right? As we get the Five of Pentacles card coming out. So I have the Eight of Swords. I have the Hierophant. And I have the Three of Wands. Like, honestly, Pisces, I want to look at you guys and I want to say, who the fuck cares what they think? And, and if this is a Taurus that you're dealing with and they've got you all mixed up in your head, it's time for you to start looking elsewhere. If this is a Virgo or a Gemini energy or an Aries energy that has you all mixed up in your head and making you feel like you're a little bit left out, they it's time for you to start looking elsewhere. Because this Three of Wands is making me like you're searching for something, Pisces. There's something that you're searching for right now. And um, again, it's a normal feeling to have this searching feeling. This is not unnatural, right? I don't want you to think, I don't want you to beat yourself up for not feeling grounded. I don't want you to beat yourself up for not knowing the answers. I, you know, because for a, an extremely intuitive sign, sometimes it's very hard for you guys to tap into that intuition if you're not treating yourself correctly or properly. And that's sort of a theme, that's like across all signs is 
we could really tap into our intuition a little bit more if we just focused a little bit more on our journey and we stopped focusing so much on what everybody else was doing around us, right? But this magician energy, and then we have the emperor and we have the five of pentacles. Pisces, your, your creations and the things that you're making right now, I want you to recognize that you can do things um, there's there's a, a line, right? There's a line that you have to pay attention to and you can't go past that line because then you're forcing something, right? You're trying to force it. You're trying to control the outcome of it. You're trying to control the way that it's going to go. And the more you force it, Pisces, and the more you try and control the outcome, the things that you say, that the way that you show up, the energy that you put out there, and, and the more you expect something in return that's not being returned to you, the more you're going to feel like the Five of Pentacles. And I sort of feel like that's a lesson for you to learn in December, that you may not feel like you're a part of the crowd right now, and you may feel that push or that need or that want to break free and to be a part, or not to break free, but, but to, break, to be vulnerable and to be a part of a crowd and to have more people in your life that are like-minded individuals that can create with you, you know? Sorry, it's tickling. I wasn't sure, and it's not attached to me. Oh my gosh. It was really ticklish right here. Sorry about that. So annoying. Okay, let's clarify and see what we have. So the Eight of Swords is about really being bound in your own mind and sort of being stuck on a mindset and not seeing a perspective in any other way. Sometimes it can feel like a hanged man energy, but you've really created this moment for yourself. Like there's no reason for you to be so stuck in your mind that you can't, you can't refocus, you can't turn in another way, you know? Um, are you worried about your independence? Are you worried about being, are you worried that you're going to be alone forever? Are you worried, because you're like, <laughs> the, the way this Nine of Pentacles on this Eight of Swords feels like to me is, um, I mean, I know that I can be on my own. I know that I can be abundant. I just don't want to be. But even in thinking like that, even thinking that way is a resistance to what you want. Even if you don't want to be alone, the moment that you, rec you, you realize and you recognize that being alone is the, your favorite place to be, when you start to really enjoy just being with yourself, and when you really start to enjoy uh, your own company, it's like everything else sort of falls away. That's really freeing. So I don't want you to be scared or worried that you might be, quote unquote, alone forever. Because first of all, you're not. And second of all, sometimes being alone is not the worst fate to have. I mean, I would rather be on my own and be alone than be with somebody who's really toxic and mean and horrible to me and abusive, right? Um, you could be dealing with a Capricorn energy, possibly one that you are married to. But I think that this person sort of has you up in your head as well. Um, if it's not a Capricorn energy, it's karmic. Um, and I sort of feel like there's, um, you feel a spiritual tie to somebody or you feel a, a spiritual that connection, right? That, you know, we all like to say, but we had a connection. And, and that's great. That's fantastic. Every connection that we have in our life is here to teach us a lesson in some way. Um, so it's fine that you have a connection with somebody. I just don't want you to get obsessed with it. Um, and it's not that I think that you will be obsessed with it, but you could have a tendency. And, and when you become obsessed with something, you wait for them because you're so very loyal, right? Three of Wands. You sort of wait for the person to show up because you don't want to be alone. Um, but here's the thing, though, Pisces, is, again, 
you want to align to what you're attracting. So if you don't even like being alone with yourself, why, why do you think you're going to attract somebody that wants to be alone with you? Think about what I just said. If you, if, if being on your own and being alone just with yourself is such a terrible fate for you and gets you all up in your head and gets you all messed up, nobody is going to be able to fill that void within you, right? And if you, if you think that looking elsewhere, if you think looking anywhere other than where you are right now is going to fulfill you. I guarantee you that seven of swords is telling you that you're lying to yourself and possibly to other people because you feel like it's okay that you keep on searching. You keep on searching for something that's of value. You keep on searching that's for something that's not going to make you feel like you're on your own. And in some ways, you, you even try to control and manipulate and manifest it to be that way. And, and again... It's not wrong. It's not right. It just is. It happens. Um, this is what happens when we are desperately not wanting to heal the wounds, right? When we don't want to pay attention to the wounds, that's what happens. There are times where I will just be like, you know what? I don't feel like healing any wounds today. And so I'm totally shutting down and I'm going to distract myself. It's the distractions of life that keep us from healing. So I distract myself with being on Twitter, I distract myself with being on Instagram, I distract myself with binge watching Netflix, I distract, 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 distract. If you really want to manifest and control a situation where you're getting more gains than what this Five of Pentacles is creating for you, if you really want to manifest, you have to sit with yourself. You have to become your own best friend and you have to realize that even those gooey, vulnerable, lovely, flowing, open parts of a Pisces that you guys are. <laughs> Even those parts are amazing and magical and fantastic. And when you recognize that about yourself, the whole world sees it. And that's where I want you to manifest from. Because you have this opportunity in December to put yourself out there. You have this opportunity in December to change the way you think about your journey and to recognize that there is no one destination. There's a whole bunch of different destinations along the way. But with this Fool card on the Magician, are you ready to do everything that you've ever wanted in your life, Pisces? Are you ready to get everything that you've ever wanted? Because you certainly have the tools to do it and you have that knowing, that faith, that knowing, and that faith. You just have to take a risk. And you have to believe in yourself. You have to bet on yourself. You don't control it. Controlling it is the resistance, right? Being in this emperor energy, forcing the issue, pushing the issue, um, hoping, wishing, praying, meditating. And this is what you're trying to control. I knew it. I knew it. There is a connection. This has to do with a relationship. And it has to do with a relationship that you probably had a set idea in terms of in your mind that it was supposed to go a certain way. You had a certain expectation of it and it fell short. And now you're sitting here waiting for it to show up. And this is when you release and you surrender. This is the surrendering. Okay, in fact, that I might call the reading the surrendering because it really is. You're being asked to surrender. You're being asked to surrender to the feelings. You're being asked to surrender to the connection. Hold on a second. Wet my whistle. You're being asked to release control and expectations of the outcome of this lover's card. And maybe you have really strong feelings for an Aries. Two. A Pisces Aries relationship. That would be interesting. That would be really interesting. I'd have to see the whole chart. And you got to be honest with yourself about this Five of Pentacles because I sort of felt like this along the whole way, along the reading. 
Um, I feel like you're putting yourself out. Honestly, I feel like the more you push and the more you're resisting, you're actually putting yourself out more than helping yourself right now. So I need you to be honest with yourself on this Five of Pentacles and how this Five of Pentacles might be making you feel. You know? And, and, and if when the epiphany happens in December, because there will be an aha moment for you and you'll be like, oh, that's what Betsy meant. <laughs> oh, I get it. I see. I see. I see. I see. When this Ace of Swords moment happens, you can turn it into your intuition easily. There is going to be a moment of clarity. And I feel like there's also going to be a conversation that you sort of saw coming, right, with the Ace of Swords and the High Priestess. You sort of saw this conversation coming, and this is your test. When this person shows up, when this conversation happens, when this piece of information shows up into your life, how are you going to react to it? Are you going to allow yourself to stay detached? Because that's what I mean when I say make healthy boundaries for yourself. You have to have a healthy level of detachment from all situations, right? So are you going to allow yourself to detach from the situation and create and that with that created boundary that you had for that certain situation, that certain person, you say, okay, um, am I going to uphold my boundary? Am I going to allow this person or am I going to stay grounded, right? You do see a very stable future with a fire sign or somebody who has heavy fire in their chart. I have the queen of wands and the king of wands with the, the ten of pentacles in the middle. So this could be a Leo, Aries, even a Sagittarius. Um, you could be dealing with more than one person, more than one fire sign, and you're trying to wonder, you're trying to figure out who's going to be my long-term stable partner. Um, my bet's on the Leo. Oh, look at that, Leo. And then the Sagittarius is the bottom. I don't know. I think you're going to have to make your own decision. Um, honestly, Pisces, I feel like more than anything, this is about who has your back this is about surrendering to the universe and letting the universe show you who truly 100 percent has your back and who you are um allowing in your space and are you allowing the toxic energies to stay in your space because they are safe and they're secure or are you ready to venture out and find something that's true and something that's balanced and something that's going to prove to have long-term stability? I think it's really interesting that the Leo and the Sagittarius energy popped out at the same time. It's almost as if the universe is laughing and saying, Betsy, we're not going to let Betsy give you the answer. You have to really listen to your intuition and figure it out on your own. Get the answers from within, Pisces. That's what you're best at. I truly hope you guys have an amazing month. Um, register for my meditations. The meditations have been life-changing, not just for myself, but for everybody who shows up, who, who um, joins in them. So the weekly meditations are amazing. You can register on Patreon, or you can just go to my website and register individually. Um... Yeah, uh, what else? What else? Oh, my readings are on sale right now, as well as the jewelry. The jewelry is handmade jewelry, and I put Reiki energy in it before I send it to you. So you always sort of have, um, you always have a piece of me with you when you get the jewelry, and they're all, it's all on sale. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful December, and I will see you for, ooh, I'm going to see you for your six-month forecast. Bye.